Chapter 9, A Puzzling Discovery A trap door, Ned repeated. But we've been walking all over this place and it didn't open. Right, Nancy agreed. And there isn't any sign of a way to move it. Do you think that Bess and Dave fell through? Then the door snapped shut, Ned asked. Yes, Nancy replied. Perhaps there's a spring hidden somewhere in this kitchen, Ned suggested. Suppose we see if it's in the cupboards. Nancy was thinking hard and did not answer. Finally, she said, I believe old Robbie is programmed to open and close the trap door when it is stepped on. But maybe so long as anybody is down below, he can't pull the trick again. And the trap door can't be pushed up from the underside? Ned asked. Evidently not. Unless, Nancy added fearfully, Bess and Dave fell into such a deep hole or onto rocks. Ned guessed her thought and his face became very sober. You think they could be lying down there injured? Nancy nodded. I'm worried, Ned. Terribly worried. This was probably all part of Raleigh's plan. Well, one thing is sure, he added. We must get the trap door open. And how are we going to do that if the robot won't work? Nancy said that they might have to break a section off the floor. But first I want to try something. What? Ned queried. Nancy said, perhaps the tape came to the end. If we turn it back and start over again, the program may repeat itself. It's worth a try, Ned remarked. But from what you've told me about this sneaky mechanical man, I think we'd better be on the watch for an attack. Nancy went for the key and unlocked the closet. Ned rolled the robot out and stood him in the exact location where he and Nancy had found him. They took off his head. The tape had already rewound itself and turned off the main switch. Nancy reset it and instantly the whirring sound began. She and Ned were careful to stay away from the trap door area. But they wondered if, without their weight on it, that section of the floor would open. As they stood watching, the two heard a faint click, then a sound as if machinery were working down below. But the door did not move. It's just waiting for someone to step on it, Nancy stated. She and Ned reached down and pushed with all their might, but carefully avoided stepping on the suspected section. Their efforts were finally rewarded. A trap door opened downward. You were right, Nancy, said Ned. He dropped to his knees and called into the dark area below. Bess! Dave! There was no answer. Fearing that the trap door might close again, Nancy disconnected the tape. The whirring sound stopped immediately. Nancy got down on her knees and shone her flashlight into the depths below. The hole was about six feet deep and had an earthen floor. She and Ned gave sighs of relief. It was unlikely that Bess and Dave could have been injured by falling through the trap door. So far, so good, Nancy murmured. But where did they go? The beam of her flashlight revealed an opening to what looked like a tunnel. I'll go down, said Ned. You'd better stay here until I see what's there. Oh, I hope you find Bess and Dave and they'll be all right, she replied anxiously. The front door knocker pounded loudly. Nancy said she would answer. George stood there. What's going on? she asked worriedly. Did you find Bess and Dave? No, Nancy replied, but we just uncovered a possible clue to where they went. I'll show it to you. She led the way into the kitchen, and George stared in amazement at the open trap door. Nancy explained that the robot had unfastened it. George, I'd like to go down and search with Ned. Will you stay here and guard this tricky door? I'm sure it can't close by itself because I've disconnected the tape but just the same, I'd hate to be trapped underground. I'll do anything to help find Bess and Dave, George replied. I'd like to go down there myself, but I'll do as you say and wait up here. Nancy gripped the edge of the opening and then dropped lightly to the ground below. Ned, she called loudly. Her voice echoed in the tunnel, but presently she received a mumbled reply from him. Here I am. Nancy hurried along the vaulted corridor which was made of stone and earth. There were no openings on either side. The corridor turned sharply to the left. Just ahead, she saw Ned. He was tugging at a heavy door. Nancy hastened toward him. You found something, she called out. I think so, he replied hopefully. This door must lead somewhere, 
I pounded on it several times, thinking if Bess and Dave were on the other side, they would pound back. But there wasn't any response. As Nancy ran forward, her foot kicked a hard object. She stopped and shone her flashlight on it. Oh, she murmured, it can't be. She leaned down and picked up the object. It was the missing end of the railing and newel to the banister which disappeared so mysteriously into the wall of the entrance hall. Ned, Nancy cried out, look at this. He hurried back and stared at the piece of wood. Do you know what this means? Nancy asked excitedly. No, what? At one time, she replied, that railing and newel must have gone all the way to the bottom of the stairs. In the thrill of her discovery, Nancy had momentarily forgotten her reason for being in the tunnel. She said quickly, Solving the mystery of the crooked banister will have to wait. I'll give you a hand with that big door, Ned. I wonder what we'll find. Bess and Dave, I hope. They laid their flashlights on the ground and both tugged as hard as they could at the stout handle. The door began to give a little. Pull harder, Ned urged. The next moment, the door opened with a rush, sending Nancy and Ned over backward onto the ground. End of chapter 9